Good morning, good life everyone. Today it's time to get more done with the amazing productivity hack of time batching. This is a much requested video we have been talking about for a while, it's coming for a while. I've always talked to you about calendar blocking. If you are new to that topic, there's definitely a couple of videos you're going to want to see before this one, but we're going to get into it. It's all very much related. As I was writing down all of my ideas and my thoughts about time batching and what you need to know about them, I was thinking about a great analogy that Tim Ferriss shared about the idea of time batching, and that was thinking about your laundry. When you do laundry, laundry, you usually do it in loads. He says, you know, if you have one dirty sock or two dirty socks even, you're not going to go rush to the washer and dryer to do that thing. We need to think more like that with our tasks and the things that we do on a regular basis, especially the things that tend to repeat themselves either every day or every week. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to dig into some benefits, things that you should be thinking about if you're not sure if this is for you or not. If your schedule is taken up by a full-time job or if you're like me and your full-time job is designed the way that you create created it, this is a strategy that you can use. So definitely stay tuned to some other things that I'm going to be talking about as well, like how to do it, you know, what things you might think about batching, and sort of the where and the when of everything. I'm actually going to take you to the computer so you can see an example of how I batch specific things that I have to do. Before we dig in, I have to give a Twitter shout out to Stephanie Mackin, at smackin1117. Thank you so much for retweeting my last video when it came out. I love to give Twitter shout outs. It's one of my favorite social networks. I've been on it probably almost the longest of anything. That and YouTube, pretty much the longest I've gone on most social networks. And so I love to share the love. So if you retweet my video when it comes out, it's very easy. You follow me, you see the video, you retweet it, you could potentially get a shout out in the next video. So what is time batching? Here's basically what you need to know. If you think about tasks that you do on a regular basis and putting them on your calendar, you could just kind of pop them on there if you wanted to. That's great. That's calendar blocking at its basic level. But if you really want to be efficient, you'll take the ones that are most alike or all alike and put them together on the calendar. Let's say you're a writer and you like to write for your blog. You could write a blog post whenever you could fit it in, or maybe you have a full-time job you have to balance as well. So maybe you need to get a little bit ahead on your writing and you might only have weekends to yourself. So maybe you pick a Saturday to block one, two, or three blog posts that you have to get done and get them all done together. Or maybe there's another type of writing that you would pair with a blog post that you have to write, such as a project that you're working on for school or a presentation that you're working on for work. If it's all computer work, maybe we can have it all be on the same day. What are the benefits to doing this? Whether you're choosing days for batching, which is the example I just gave, or maybe there's just pockets of time throughout your day that make sense to batch things. One of the benefits is deep work. If you've ever read this book, it's fantastic, but all you basically need to know is that it's very, very hard to get focused on something if you're never really all the way in it. So let's say I was editing a video on my computer, but I was also checking email at the same time. And I'm also trying to take a phone call when it happens in a half an hour, and so I have to really pay attention to my phone while I'm editing so I don't miss that call. It's really tough for me to give that video 100% of my attention if I'm not fully focused on it. So part of the reason for this whole concept of batching for deep work is so that you're not distracted with outside things that could keep you from being 100% in the thing you're trying to get done. Another great benefit to me is preparation doesn't go to waste. So writing is a great example because once you get started, it can be really slow, but then once you've gotten going and you start typing words, it gets easier and easier and easier. Maybe not every time, but for the most part, just getting started is hard. So if you're trying to write every single day and it's hard and you need a half an hour to an hour to ramp up to your best work, that's not feasible for most people because once that hour is up, they might have to be somewhere else. They might have to go to work. They might have something else that they have to do. They might not be able to spend four hours writing every single day. It just depends on what your life looks like. Let's go back to video making as the example for me. Preparation you're looking at it. Not only do I need to prepare for what a video is going to be about, so that's like strategy and outlining, and that's one type of task. Then there's actually setting up cameras and lights. Then there's 
actually putting clothes on and makeup and straightening my hair or curling it, depending on how much time we actually have. All of this preparation means, hmm, I could sit here and I could make one video or what if I made a second or a third or somebody else wanted some little teaser for something or oh I'd really love to record this for Twitter or maybe I should sit here in front of my lights and do a little Instagram rant. How can I make the most of this time when I'm on? And finally, something I kind of touched on already, but you gotta stop doing the things that you shouldn't be doing when you shouldn't be doing them. In this world of smartphones and computers and every device pinging you when somebody calls, it's really easy to get distracted when somebody else decides they'd like to distract you. Not even knowing they want to distract you, they're just maybe trying to get a hold of you. Twitter pings and text messages and phone calls and maybe somebody wants to talk to you that's in your home or your office. You don't want to be doing that when you're trying to do this deep work or trying to be a part of this block on your calendar and get it done in a period of time that you have set. So time batching is great because let's say you don't take any phone calls during periods of time when you're writing or making videos or whatever the thing is for you. Then there's no phone calls that should be bothering you. You can easily turn your phone on do not disturb and whoever's calling was calling unannounced and so they do not need to be spoken to yet. This is just a great way to start getting in that mindset especially if it's not something that you've quite figured out how to balance yet. All right so what are some things that you could batch? Things that happen on a regular basis. Maybe they're not every day, maybe they're every week, maybe they're every month, but you want to batch out the time so that you can spend that focused period on it. We've talked a lot about creative so far. Creative time is a thing. Maybe it's just you spending time getting creative or spending time writing or spending time creating content, or maybe it's just reading a book that makes you feel more creative. Batching creative time, maybe it's a specific day of the week or maybe you have to play it by ear week over week, is really important for continuing to keep that primed for yourself. Administrative tasks like calendaring or checking project managers or doing little tasks that have to get done whenever you have a second or checking email. Another thing to think about is social time. Like I actually make time on the calendar for DMs or replying to tweets and that's really important to me because communicating with you matters to my life. Meeting people for coffee, going out of your office or out of your home for certain things. These are also things that you can batch whenever possible. I love when someone says, hey, I want to pick your brain or I want to meet you for coffee. I like to put a few of those people together and I'll just spend like three hours at a coffee shop. It's like, okay, Susie's at four and Betsy is at five and then Joe is at six and then I'm done and then I've done all my co coffee meetings and maybe for a month I'm done and because that's usually how I like to do it. All right, so how are we going to get this done for you? These are my tips to get started. First, start making a list of all the things that you do. Go to work, do the laundry, morning routines, maybe you write for a blog, maybe you have a YouTube channel. What are these things that you do on a regular basis? Just start making a list. What you're gonna do is you're gonna find things that have common denominators and you're gonna say, okay, well when I meet someone for coffee and when I record a video, then I need to get my makeup done. <laughs> socially acceptable, right? Sometimes I have to get on phone conferences and sometimes I record podcast interviews. Those are our great examples of voice time. And so maybe you can have all of those in one set period or one day of the week. Put those common denominators together so that we can start this batching process. Because if you haven't quite done that yet, it's gonna be really hard to batch. You can calendar block really easily because you can take any task and throw it on the calendar. But we're trying to find the common tasks and how we can more efficiently and focused get that done. This is when it comes time for scheduling. We need to look at a calendar and just come to terms with how many hours there are in a day. And it'll be so fascinating to you. Let's say you watch on average four hours of television a day because it's just how your life has worked out. If you have loftier goals and you realize, oh wow, I could add this after work or I could add this before work as a part of my morning routine. I could do this on the weekends. When you really start to outline your goals and how to get them and, and achieve what you're hoping to, you will suddenly find you do not have as much time for TV as you thought. It's, it's almost sad. And then when you actually make something happen, you're like, whew, that was a way better use of my time. Next, all that's left is to just do. And if it doesn't require your phone, turn your phone off and maybe even get a time cube. So I love this little guy. I will link to it in the description below. I've told you about it before. If someone says, hey, I wanna to talk to you on the phone for 15 minutes, okay. 15 minutes, let's go, and that's it. If um, Vin comes in and says, hey, I need to interrupt your work real quick and just talk to you about something as it pertains to Aftermark, it's kind of an emergency, okay, fine. Then you get five minutes, let's go. And 
that is so helpful because it's a visual indicator for you. It's also a, an audible indicator for you when that thing goes off. It's like, okay, you're done now. <laughs> and then if you also use a digital calendar, it's gonna ping you if you set it to a reminder. I get a 10 minute reminder whenever my next appointment is starting. So if I get the 10 minute reminder that I'm supposed to edit video number two and I'm on video number one, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have 10 minutes left to finish this video. Otherwise, I'm cutting into video two's time. Does it merit? that? Am I trying to be a perfectionist here? Are we really done and I could have exported already? So these are the things that really help is you get a big perspective on how much time you end up wasting because you don't pay attention to how much time you actually have. Okay, so I want to pop over to the computer now and show you an example of what I would do for myself for time batching. I'm basically going to take what I already do and remap it out for you so you can get a real world time batching calendar blocked situation. Okay, so what you're seeing here is an example of my actual calendar blocked calendar. And so I just wanna give you a couple of things that you need to be looking at. Clearly there's a lot of tasks here that happen every day or every week. And so the way that I've figured out where to put those is based on themes that I've built into my weekly schedule. The days that I'm filming videos, I don't wanna be editing, and the days that I'm editing, I don't wanna be taking meetings, and so that's why every day has a theme. So if you look at the top, every Monday and every Wednesday is a content creation themed day. What that basically means is I'm on camera, I have makeup on, I've gotten dressed, I am socially acceptable. <laughs> that's pretty much what that means. Production days mean I'm probably sitting a lot. I'm sitting at the computer a lot. I'm doing some things that mean just executing and getting something finalized. On Fridays, that's my voice day. I got this idea from Tim Ferriss as well. Voice day is essentially, am I taking phone calls or interviews or having a meeting of some kind, usually remote, but it just sort of depends. Um, am I podcasting, things like that. So each day there is a place to put something that is in my typical workflow. If you want more of a tutorial on calendar blocking, I have that as a video you can watch and you can get an idea of how I ended up putting all of this stuff on here. There are things that happen every day, there are things that happen every other day. But the point of this batching tutorial is to show you where something would happen if it came into my life right now. Let's say my assistant said that somebody wanted to interview me for their podcast. Because I have a day designated to that, I am going to put it somewhere on this calendar. Or she's going to help me put it there. And we're going to say interview with ABC show. And so we'll probably give that a, a signifier of, you know, you're, you're taking a phone call with somebody and it's going to be an hour starting at 11 a.m. And so we would put that on voice day. You'll also notice that I have different colors here. You want to work with different colors so that you know what is expected of you, in my opinion. It's a great way to just get a quick glimpse at your calendar and know what you need to do. This coral color means it's me time. The red color means you better look fire girl because you're on camera or you're going to be seen uh, in public or whatever the case. Purple is just get it done, get it done, get it done, sitting at the computer likely. And so this is why I chose blue for the um, just like you're, you're doing an interview, you're getting on the phone, something like that. If somebody says, hey, you're speaking at my event, I need you to record a 30 second video promoting the event so we can share it on our socials, then that's either going to go on a Monday or a Wednesday. And it looks like we have time on this particular Monday. So we're going to do event teaser. And um, we were, we're gonna go in, we're gonna make that red because look and fire, look and fire. And I'm probably gonna move email then because we don't need to check email at a specific time, it just needs to happen. And so it's probably not gonna take me that long to do and I'm gonna make that a half an hour and tack it on to the end of a filming session for Amy TV. If somebody asked me to write a guest blog post, there are a couple of options for this. I can choose content creation day because it's just sort of bonus. I'm just gonna be sitting at the computer checking email at some point, but I'm not usually in the flow in those situations. What I will do for this is I'll shift everything down. So let's just, let's do that. Let's just shift this down because I like to write in the morning. And so Trello can wait. And so after I've done my morning routine, we're going to write that um, XYZ guest blog post and allocate an hour for that 
at that time. So 9.30, 10.30, and we're going to say, just get it done, purple, get it done. And so that's now on a production day. If somebody asks me if I want to get a cup of coffee or if they want to take me to dinner or something along those lines, I'm more than likely going to wait until I've gotten all of my have-tos done on a filming day and get that done. Looks like coffee is going to be really tough on Wednesdays because I also have to publish Amy TV. So it would be likely to happen on a Monday, but I would also include that on a Friday. So um, I might go and get lunch with Joe. And so again, we're probably going to want a signifier color. And what I try to do for this is just a, a blatant girl, you not only need to be dressed, but you got to leave the house kind of color. <laughs> and so that's what happens here, lunch with Joe. And so you just try to find where things fit in based on how you've pre-designed your schedule based on your batching. And this way, your blog post is much more effective because you were in the zone for production day. And all of your videos or all of your front facing stuff, maybe you're doing an Instagram story or something like that, you schedule that in for the day that you are suited to do that. Um, let's say we're going to do a rant on that day because something's really fired us up and we have to we have to post it. Well, you better look fire if you're fired up. So <laughs> I don't mean this to be like a, a super su superficial thing, but I do have to think about this stuff. You know, did I get ready for the day? Is this how I'm going to present my brand? Am I in the right office environment to present my brand? And, and so these are just a couple things to think about as you are batching. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully that was helpful. Even if it doesn't really relate to you because your job isn't like my job, that's okay. There's hopefully some things there that would have been helpful for you to take direction in your own life. I went to my Instagram and asked you guys if you had any specific questions about calendar blocking. And so I want to answer them now since we have a little bit more time. Last time I did this, the video didn't post because I shut Instagram down too fast and I didn't get any questions. Oh, we've got some. Oh, yes. Kelly's question says, how much white space do you schedule to account for tasks that take longer than expected? You probably noticed on my calendar that there's big blocks <laughs> for things on my calendar. And that's because I'm hoping I've allotted too much time for something, not not enough time, just based on what I know, how long it's taken me in the past. Because what I'm hoping will happen is I will get done early, but that time is still blocked out so that I have a little bit of breathing room. You can also schedule that breathing room. If you're like, oh my God, maybe Amy got a little too aggressive with her squares, they were too close to each other, and when do you pee? And, Okay, it's cool. It's literally not that perfect ever, but I'm hoping that some things will help other things. I'll get done with one thing early and I'll maybe have to run over a little bit for something else. When something runs over and it literally needs more time on the calendar, I haven't accounted for it and I need to you know, have dinner with my husband and sleep a full seven to eight hours and all that kind of stuff. You've just got to move things around and find another place to get it done. As you start to get ahead of your own schedule, so let's say you blog once a week. So if you write two blog posts a week, then you're going to be ahead of schedule over a period of time. The idea is that you'll still have given yourself enough space that if the marked amount of time isn't enough, you'll still have given yourself a little bit of a grace period. This question's a little bit hard to read, but I think what it is saying is if something gets canceled, do you have a backup plan? Yes. If I pull up my calendar <laughs> and I look at it, I'm like, huh, well, this is interesting. I have a lot of things here that I need to do, and this giant block of time is now obsolete because let's say somebody didn't show up for their coffee or whatever the case. I will basically just look at both my bullet journal if the calendar is not helpful, but usually I can look at the calendar and find something. If the calendar says, oh, um, somebody didn't show up for this coffee, but you're supposed to check email in three hours. Okay, great. I'm just going to bump up my email check for that time that I will have lost, or I can start running writing something if um, I was supposed to do that. There's always something else to do. So yes, the backup plan fortunately has already been designed for me because if I have blocked out and batched my schedule, then I'm able to fill time that didn't work out as planned. You may have seen this a little bit with my recent vlog where I showed you calendar blocking over a weekend and it was snowing so hard I couldn't go to my mom's house and that was a big chunk of, chunk of time. I would have just assumed I was doing nothing but hanging out with family. So I moved things into that space. You don't have to always fix your calendar just because something changed, but I'm kind of a freak like that. Melanie said, should you batch according to location, time required, or some other criteria? So it's going to be different for everyone. I think that's the big takeaway here. Time batching, calendar blocking is different for 
everyone. But if it's location, it could be like the three coffees in a row, right? For me, it's sometimes I have makeup on. How can I make the most of the fact that I spent an hour putting makeup on my face? Your decision on batching something is based on how easy it is for you to slide from one task to the next. It's very difficult for me to plan a video and then get on a phone call. Like creative and then I gotta talk to other people is just so not cool with me. But that might be cool with you. Those are two things you can do without makeup on in your office or you know at your office, whatever. I just keep talking about things in regards to makeup. I'm sorry, like that's how I make most decisions in my life. Did you shower? Did you have to do your hair? Did you have to put makeup on? That's a lot. But it's completely based on what your preference is. Can you slide from one appointment to the next? I also think about it in regards to travel. If I am going to Boston in a couple of weeks, which I am for one one particular reason, what else can I do while I'm there? I'm gonna batch seeing people that I know. I'm there, I'm gonna do an interview for someone and because I'm in this atmosphere, I know Joe who lives down the street in downtown Boston and hey, let's meet up, let's have coffee, I'm gonna be in your neck of the woods. Bridget said, how do you respond to interruptions? Not well, not gonna lie. <laughs> when the phone rings, I look at it like it is an alien and I'm like, how? dare you do this at this very moment. But I'm also just mad at myself because I'm like, Amy, do not disturb, duh, why didn't you turn it on? My husband sometimes has to deal with the wrath of like, I don't know what to do with you right now because I am immersed in something else. And we have to work that out, we have to talk through it. It's not gonna be easy. Like if this stuff was easy, you wouldn't be watching a video about it. The hardest part about it is making yourself do it because you're not just saying I'm gonna go after my goals, you're saying I'm going to make the time so I can actually see the possibility of going after my goals. So Try to communicate that to other people who may or may not be on the same page as you, or they are and they just don't realize that they're taking you out of your zone, it's important to have that conversation. Natalie said, how do you time block without a million alerts on Google Calendar? Natalie, I live for those alerts. <laughs> I need them. I need the direction. I love when my watch pings that 10 minute warning of like, uh, you're supposed to be on a call at 2.30. Like that's what my watch says right now. My watch tells me what my next appointment is. It's 12.15, my next thing is at 2.30. So I know I'm doing pretty good on time. I've gotta get this video done. I've got to get, to get the next video done, maybe even a third video done, and then I can move on to the next thing. Which reminds me, do I wanna get on a phone call today? No, I don't. But sometimes things don't work out exactly as they are to be batched. So my final lesson for you is, if it doesn't pan out exactly as designed, welcome to life. <laughs> There's a call today that my team had to have and even though it's a content creation day for me, I am their leader. I have to be on that call and so I'm not gonna be like, no guys, unfortunately I only do calls on Fridays. I'm more likely to say to external sources that that's the case. Aftermark on a case by case basis gets me when it is absolutely necessary. So we pencil it in when it's absolutely necessary. Okay, what do you think of this whole time batching thing? I really wanna hear your feedback. Did I miss anything? Do you still have questions? Leave them below. What is still holding you back from getting the most amount of work done efficiently in a set period of time? Let me know. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. And make sure you subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and remember to go after the life that you want. Cheers.